Hello students, today I will be presenting the topic of thrombosis. Thrombosis is actually the process of formation of clotted mass of blood within a vessel or heart during life. It is the clotted mass of blood actually and that clotted mass of blood is known as thrombus. The process of the formation of thrombus is known as thrombosis. Uh, to know about the pathogenesis, there are three factors which are involved. Uh, that is, uh, you have to memorize this triad, which is known as Vitreous triad, involving the endothelial injury, stasis of blood flow, and hypercoagulability. Endothelial injury is uh, uh, because of any inflammatory process or hypertension or um, bacterial toxins, cigarette smoking, anything that damages the inner uh, most lining of the vessel which is the endothelium, causes the exposure of subendothelial matrix or collagen to the platelets and platelets start initiating the process of uh, uh, um, uh, clot formation or the thrombus formation as you know about the role of the platelets. Uh, then there can be the stasis of blood flow. Stasis means stoppage of, uh, of the flow of uh, any fluid. So normal blood flow is uh, in a laminar fashion. Uh, the elements flow centrally in the lu vessel lumen, separated from the endothelium by a clear zone of plasma. So if there is any stasis or stoppage of the blood flow or turbulence uh, in the blood flow, uh, that the normal pattern is disturbed that leads to the formation of thrombus. Then the third one is the hypercoagulability. Um, if there is any disruption or alteration in the coagulation pathway that predisposes to thrombosis. Coagulation pathways are the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. These, these will be discussed in hematology section. So any disruption in these uh, coagulation pathways that leads to the hypercoagulability state and hypercoagulable state leads to thrombus formation. Um, the examples are the nephrotic syndrome, pregnancy, obesity, deficiency of antithrombin 3, surgery, cardiac failure, disseminated cancers, etc. These are the examples of the endothelial injury, traumatic or inflammatory injury, hypertension, myocardial infarction bacterial toxins, they all lead to the disruption of uh, innermost layer of the vessel, that is endothelium. Then the alteration in blood flow, that is the aneurysms, hyperviscosity syndromes, myocardial infarction, mitral stenosis, all the, uh, these causes the alteration in the blood flow. Like uh, if there is aneurysm or the aneurysm is actually the weakening of the arterial wall that causes the distension or the uh, bulge formation uh, in which there is uh, blood accumulation or stasis. So the ultra normal uh, blood flow is disturbed as well as the mitral stenosis. The normal uh, mitral valve is if it is stenosed, obviously it would lead to the alteration in blood flow. In the heart. Uh, then the hypercoagulability examples are the nephrotic syndrome, pregnancy and delivery, surgery, cardiac failure, severe trauma, or burns, obesity, deficiency of antithrombin 3 and disseminated cancers. These are, are the examples which are important for your MCQs and, and SCQs. Now let us discuss the types of thrombi. Uh, thrombi if classified as morphologically, um, they, then uh, these are classified as pale thrombi and red thrombi. Uh, pale thrombi is actually um, dry and easily breakable and it composed of platelets and fibrin with few entrapped RBCs, red blood cells, and they typically develop in arterial circulation. So every sentence or every um, statement of uh, this um, para is an MCQ. Then red thrombi, the composer of platelets, fibrin and large number of RBCs, red blood cells and trapped in fibrin mesh and typically developed in venous circulation. Uh, the difference in between these two, that the pale thrombi, uh, it is formed in the usually in the arterial circulation, red thrombi in the venous circulation. 
pale thumbai as its name indicated it would be containing less entrapped rbcs while in red thumbai the number of entrapped rbcs in fibrin branch is more and the um they are dry actually and easily breakable if we talk about the clinical types then there are arterial thrombi venous thrombi and mural arterial thrombi that occurs in arteries as the name indicate uh, that occur in arteries and heart like aorta carotid arteries coronary arteries of intestine and limbs and these thrombi arterial thrombi they cause the obstruction of the lumen and they always grow in retrograde fashion uh that is in opposite direction to the blood flow i will show you in the diagram as well then the venous thrombi uh that occurs in veins these are uh, as the name indicate that they uh, are the ones that occur in veins like the deep calf veins femoral veins popliteal veins iliac veins and they always obstruct the lumen while the arterial thrombi they do not always obstruct the new lumen while well, the venous are those that always obstruct the lumen and they grow in the direction of blood flow while the arterial ones were going in the retrograde fashion then the mural thrombi these are those that are attached to the wall of the chamber of the heart this is the image showing the arterial thrombus and the venous thrombus this is the arterial thrombus showing the platelets the fibrin the rbcs the red and the um, blood flow blood flow is in the direction from left to right while the thrombus arterial thrombus is formed in the opposite direction while uh, venous thrombus you can see that the blood flow is in the direction from left to right while the venous thrombus is formed in in the direction of the blood flow here shown the fibrin the platelets the uh, rbcs the net the rbcs are more in number as compared to the arterial thrombi it is in the direction of the blood flow and uh, mural thrombi uh, they are usually uh, for when they develop in the heart chambers or in the aorta they are usually attached to the wall of the um, would to the wall of the chamber and they do not occlude any lumen so such thrombi are called as mural thrombi example is the um, when there is inflammation of the cardiac valve like in endocardial damage that occurs in endocarditis it leads to the local turbulence and deposition of platelets and fibrin on the valves forming thrombi these thrombi are also called vegetations in case of uh, endocarditis so we call them as mural thrombi because they are cardiac thrombi actually and they do not occlude any lumen then uh, damage to the endocardium in case of myocardial infarction uh, leads to the thrombus formation in the atrial fibrillation mitral stenosis it may lead to the turbulence or stresses of blood so they all contribute to the formation of the cardiac or mural thrombi uh, venous thrombi um, this is also having further types like thrombophlebitis and phlebothrombosis thrombophlebitis is when venous thrombus occurring secondary to the acute inflammation of the vein is called as thrombophlebitis when it means that when there was a uh, inflammation in the vessel or vein and it uh, lead to the venous uh, thrombus formation so it is thrombophlebitis and phlebothrombosis is the venous thrombosis occurring in the absence of pre existing inflammation of the vein is called phlebothrombosis in which there was there is no inflammation of the vein uh, that is leading to the thrombosis so it is phlebothrombosis and thrombophlebitis is when there is inflammation in the vessel pre existing and it leads to the uh, and there is a, a formation of uh, thrombus these are the types of the venous thrombosis which i haven't uh, mentioned in the this lecture uh, in written form another important scq and mcq is the fate of thrombus fate of thrombus is either propagation uh, propagation it means there is a progression of the further progression and 
uh, by accumulation of more platelets and fibrins and eventually obstructing some critical vessels for some important vessels so it may propagate or it may embolize that it is um, the thrombi it is dislodged and may be transported to the other site in the vasculature it may uh, be it may uh, be dissolved like uh, removed by fibrinolytic activity or uh, it may induce an inflammation and fibrosis uh, called organization or it may eventually become re-canalized and re-establish vascular flow um, so either it progress and there is further accumulation of platelets and obstructing the critical vessel it may dislodge and transport it to the other side it may be removed by any fibrolytic activity or it may um, induce an inflammation and fibrosis and uh, or it may recanalize uh, establishing re-establishing the vascular flow so this is the fate of the thrombus mm -hmm. students each and every uh, statement of this topic is um, an mcq as well as an fcq mm -hmm. so mm, this is the um, shortest form or um, the way easiest way in which I have uh, tried to explain this topic if you do have any question please do ask in the comments and like and share with your friends thanks for watching